The brain is one of the most active organs in the human body and, as such, produces a significant amount of metabolic waste daily, including proteins, molecular fragments, and other substances. Among these waste products is beta amyloid, a peptide that, if not effectively cleared, tends to accumulate. Over time, this buildup can lead to the formation of plaques, which are characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. Today I would like to introduce an article published in Science in 2012. This study introduces the hypothesis of a system called the glymphatic pathway, which describes the mechanisms by which the brain eliminates its metabolic waste. According to this hypothesis, cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, plays a crucial role in this cleaning process, helping to remove interstitial solutes such as amyloid beta. Cerebrospinal fluid is a clear liquid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. It protects the brain from injury and helps with the exchange of certain substances with the blood. It's mostly produced by the choroid plexuses, which are structures inside the brain's ventricles. The fluid is released continuously, allowing it to flow throughout the central nervous system. The researchers aimed to find out if cerebrospinal fluid could actually flow from the ventricles into the brain parenchyma. The brain parenchyma is the functional tissue of the brain, composed mainly of neurons and glial cells, such as astrocytes. This tissue is traversed by arteries that supply brain cells with oxygen and nutrients. Once inside the parenchyma, these arteries branch into smaller arterioles which further branch to reach different brain areas. Surrounding these arteries and arterioles is a space known as the paravascular space, or virtual Robin space, which might act as a pathway for cerebrospinal fluid. The researchers used a technique called fluorescent tracer infusion, directly injecting tracers into the brain ventricles of anesthetized mice. They chose three tracers of different molecular sizes. These different sizes were selected because molecule size can affect how deeply they penetrate tissue. The images obtained show that the small and medium-sized tracers can partially diffuse from the ventricles into the brain parenchyma but do not penetrate deeply. The diffusion is limited to areas near the ventricles, suggesting that cerebrospinal fluid has a limited ability to flow into the parenchyma when directly infused into the ventricles. Because of this, researchers started to explore other pathways to understand how CSF moves through the brain. One possible alternative route is the cisterna magna, located at the base of the skull between the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. Just like in the first experiment, the researchers used fluorescent tracers again, but this time they injected them directly into the cisterna magna. 30 minutes after the injection, they examined the distribution of the tracers in brain sections using a fluorescence microscope. The images provide a clear view of the process. The tracers spread along the brain's blood vessels, showing different patterns based on their size. Larger molecules like FITICD2000 tracer, in green, tend to stay around the spaces surrounding arteries, known as paravascular spaces, without penetrating deeply into the brain tissue. The medium-sized tracer, TRD3, in blue, spreads more widely into the parenchyma, suggesting that molecule size affects the level of diffusion. Lastly, the smallest tracer, a 594, in red, moves more quickly and deeply into the brain parenchyma. By observing the tracers near the arterioles, they suggested that cerebrospinal fluid from the cisterna magna enters the brain parenchyma along these small arteries. The researchers observed that cerebrospinal fluid moves quickly along the surface cortical arteries and through the arterioles that extend deep into the brain. It's important to note that cerebrospinal fluid doesn't flow inside the arterioles themselves, but rather in a space next to them, called the paravascular space. This diffusion was observed using a fluorescent tracer, OA647, which showed how cerebrospinal fluid moves along the penetrating arteries, reaching deep capillaries, including those in the thalamus and basal ganglia. After about an hour, the fluid, having entered via the arteries and moved through the interstitial tissue, finally reaches the brain's terminal veins, where it is drained. Based on prior knowledge, researchers hypothesized that aquaporin-4, AQP4, could play a central role in this process. Aquaporin-4 is a protein located on brain cells called astrocytes. Astrocytes have extensions known as end feet, that form a kind of sheath around cerebral blood vessels, forming part of the blood-brain barrier. In other words, the idea is that aquaporin-4, due to its location around blood vessels, 
plays a key role in facilitating the flow of cerebrospinal fluid from the arterioles to the veins, thereby supporting the brain's cleanup system. To test this idea, the researchers compared two groups of mice to see if aquaporin-4 was essential for cerebrospinal fluid movement in the brain. The first group, called wild-type, consisted of mice with a functioning AQP4 gene, so they could produce the aquaporin-4 protein. The second group, called AQP4 null, included genetically modified mice that lacked the AQP4 gene and couldn't produce aquaporin-4. This setup allowed the researchers to observe any differences in cerebrospinal fluid flow in the absence of this protein. The images showed that in AQP4 null mice, the tracer didn't spread through the brain tissue as much as it did in the wild-type mice. This result highlights the importance of aquaporin-4 in distributing cerebrospinal fluid throughout the brain. A clear example of how the brain's inability to clear waste can have serious effects is Alzheimer's disease. This is one of the most common and debilitating neurodegenerative diseases today. It is marked by progressive memory loss and a decline in cognitive abilities. In particular, if beta amyloid, a type of peptide, isn't cleared out effectively, it can build up in the brain. This buildup can lead to toxic plaques, which are linked to cognitive decline. With this in mind, researchers decided to investigate whether and how the glymphatic system, and specifically the role of aquaporin-4, might help with removing beta amyloid. Using wild-type mice with aquaporin-4 and AQP4 null mice without aquaporin-4, the researchers examined how the bulk flow of interstitial fluid, supported by aquaporin-4, influences the clearance of solutes and proteins from the brain. To monitor this process, they used mannitol, tagged with a radioactive isotope as a tracer, and injected it directly into the brain tissue, specifically into the striatum of the mice. After two hours, the results showed that in AQP4 null mice, mannitol clearance was reduced by 70% compared to wild-type mice, highlighting the importance of aquaporin-4 in helping clear solutes from the brain. These results show that aquaporin-4 plays an active role in the cleanup process of brain interstitial fluid. To see if aquaporin-4 is also key in removing beta amyloid, the researchers next injected radio-labeled and fluorescent amyloid B into the brains of the mice. The results are shown in figures. The clearance was measured by tracking radioactivity in the brain at regular intervals for up to 60 minutes. In the wild-type mice with aquaporin-4, shown in blue, the drop in radioactivity shows that beta amyloid was cleared quickly. In the AQP4 null mice without aquaporin-4, shown in purple, clearance was much lower, by about 55%. This suggests that aquaporin-4 helps with the removal of beta amyloid from the brain. This study was key to understanding the transport and clearance system of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain introducing the concept of the glymphatic pathway. The authors demonstrated how this paravascular route supports the movement of cerebrospinal fluid and the removal of interstitial solutes within the brain tissue, including beta amyloid, a protein linked to Alzheimer's disease. The significance of this study goes beyond merely discovering a transport system. It opens up new research into the impact of the glymphatic system on the progression of neurodegenerative and neuroinflammatory diseases suggesting that its malfunction could lead to the buildup of harmful substances in the brain. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in exploring these topics further, follow us on our social media channels to stay updated. Every week, we share new content on the latest scientific discoveries.